So the RTX 4060 has been announced and there's something that I haven't seen talked a lot about that we need to address with it. Let's jump into it. So in case you missed it, Nvidia just announced the RTX 4060, 4060 Ti and 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte models. But for our purposes today, the one that's most interesting to me by far is the cheapest $299 RTX 4060. And that's because of how it stacks up against Intel's GPUs. Interesting, right? So Intel's GPUs, what they do well, what they don't do so well. Uh, what they do well is being a new card that is at least somewhat budget friendly. Now, the most interesting card that Intel has is the A750 because it has solid performance in gaming, but the thing that I'm most interested in, at least with today, is that it also has AV1 encoding. That's right, we're talking about AV1 here, which is, for those of you that are on Comcast, really important. And unfortunately, that now includes me. Used to have fiber, then moved, no longer have fiber. Big bummer. Side tangent, Comcast, if you're listening, I'm sorry, 25 megabit upload is just laughably bad. Like, make higher upload speeds affordable. Seriously. Ugh, hate Comcast. Anyways, the big deal with the new RTX 4060 cards, the 4060, 4060 Ti, and 4060 Ti 16 gig models is they are on the new NVENC encoder, which notably supports AV1 encoding. So now you're going to be able to get a brand new current generation GPU in theory for about $300 from NVIDIA that does in fact support AV1. For those of you out there that are streamers or just want to record in AV1 because you enjoy the thought of having AV1 encoding and you know the lower file sizes while maintaining the fantastic quality it's a big deal. So I actually recently did a video where I talked about the cheapest way to get sort of up and running with AV1 encoding being to buy an ARC A380 through Newegg, which a quick price check shows me that that's about $140 right now for their cheapest card. If you jump up to the A750, maybe you're trying to do AV1 encoding with Intel's cheapest GPU that's going to actually allow you to do gaming well. Uh, the A750 can be had for about $230, but I really like the value presented here by NVIDIA's RTX 4060 for those people that are trying to AV1 encode and game on the same GPU because it's going to give a nice uplift over the RTX 3060 performance, which is already a solid card, especially if you're on 1080p or 1440p and you're getting the driver maturity of NVIDIA versus Intel's drivers, which have been very much a work in progress. Now, of course, this all comes with one giant asterisk, and that, of course, is the MSRP being $299, this being more of an affordable GPU, sort of in the price range that I think a lot of PC gamers are actually willing to spend on a new GPU. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to keep these things A, in stock, and B, in stock, actually, at or even close to that price, at least initially. And I know that GPU market has been sort of on the downside for a while now, where prices are still higher than most gamers are willing to pay. But I suspect that a lot of that comes down to all the current generation cards that have been announced and then later launched. Those are all high higher end cards. This is Nvidia's first foray into the truly mid to lower ish range. Though to be fair, $300 used to be very solidly a mid range card. Thinking like the uh, GTX 970 back in the day, I want to say launched for about that price. And I just Googled it. It was $329 at launch. That was a 70 series card. And I know inflation is dri driven some, you know, prices up a little bit, but still uh, the RTX 4070 is nowhere near that price point. Now, just to talk about the 4060 Ti, both the 8 and 16 gig versions, I'm just less interested in them because at $400, the 4060 Ti needs to have more than 8 gigs of VRAM. It's just not an interesting card at all to me at that price. And then the 4060 Ti that does have 16 gigs of RAM, that's another $100 premium over the 8 gig card, and that's charging too much for that 8 gigabyte VRAM upgrade to get you to the full 16 gigs. So neither of those cards actually is very interesting at all to me. 
The only one that's even remotely interesting is the 4060 eight gigabyte card. And then of course, I'm curious what all of you think out there as gamers, is AV1 encoding even on your radar? If you're a streamer, it probably is because you can use a lower bit rate, strain your system a little bit less. And of course, if you're on Comcast, maybe you're just working with lower upload speeds on your internet connection anyways. So for those of you that are streamers, I'm sure it's interesting. But for those of you that are gamers, do you care about recording your gameplay? Do you care about file sizes? All of that sort of stuff. I'm interested to know your thoughts, especially on the 4060, the 4060 Ti, or the 4060 Ti 16 gig card. Let me know all your thoughts on these cards down below. And of course, if you like this video, give it a like, share, hit that subscribe button down below, and follow me on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. That's the easiest way to interact with me beyond the YouTube comments. And I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see all of you in the next video.